Hello church, here we are in Jeremiah chapter 18 and 19. You'll notice we're maybe a little bit lighter on the, the amount of reading today, but certainly not light on content. Let's just jump in here. Chapter 18, what I want us to see in verses 1 to 5 is what we have been calling and have learned about is what we, we know as a step prayer. All right, And what we mean by that is that sometimes we are expected to go to or do certain things uh, without necessarily knowing steps 2, 3, 4, and 5, and so on. But if God reveals step one, he expects us to obey. Now, of course, there's not uh, like uh, an absolvement, if you want to call it that, of responsibility to test step one. But if we actually feel like God has instructed us about something, we should just move ahead with that and not necessarily worry about, oh, but I, I don't really know steps two, three, and four. Never mind. Just trust that God is going to lead you in that. If you have tested step one, and it does not contradict scripture, and you've done other things to, to test to see, is this in fact the will of the Lord? Move ahead in faith, church, and just follow him and trust that he will reveal the further steps along the way. All right, then well, I want to look at verses 7 to 10. This is an incredible passage of scripture, one that is worth us meditating on and taking notice of. So what we've got here in 7 and 8, what I love about verses 7 and 8 is to me it just encapsulates the truth of John 3, 16, where it says, if a person is in a place and they are living wickedly and I announce to them that judgment's coming and that person turns and repents, God is going to receive them back and forgive them. And I just think that is just a beautiful picture of John chapter 3, verse 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only son to forgive us if we would turn and believe on him. Church, anyone, don't ever let anyone convince you that someone is beyond the hope and forgiveness that Jesus offers us. And so I want to encourage you today, church, if there are people in your life that you have been praying for for many years, continue to pray for them. They are not out of the reach of God's grace, mercy, and forgiveness. But then we must also remember from verses 9 and 10, we've got to recognize that it actually uses very strong language to say that if God has planned to bless somebody because they are walking in good things, in righteousness, but they turn from their ways, he will reconsider. So someone that I think of in, in an example of this scripturally is in 1 Samuel chapter 2, we read about Eli. It uses very strong language about Eli in, in 1 Samuel chapter 2, so much so to say, I promised you these things. He is talking about how to Eli, he promised him that he would have future generations that would be serving him in ministry. And yet because Eli did not do anything to restrain the wickedness of his children, his boys, and he did not rebuke them to correct their behavior, it says that God changed his mind and did not follow through. And instead, he would have no old relatives left in his family. Wow, that is shocking. But friends, what we can learn from this, what we should take away from this, is that we cannot get complacent in our situation if we hear a word from the Lord. Meaning that if, if we actually receive a word from the Lord of rebuke, that, that actually can be altered. If we repent and seek him for his forgiveness, then he will relent and show us mercy, just like the scriptures say. But if he has promised us good things, and we just sit back and relax and all of a sudden get casual in that, God is still able to change his mind about that if we do not respond in a way that is obedient to him. And so a good question for us to ask here would be, Lord, how do I respond to your warnings and blessings? A good question to ask. All right. And then in chapter 19, what I want us to see, I want to cover this just as a whole here. But essentially, this chapter is just talking about, about depravity. What, it, what amazes me is the level of depravity that people that know of or know about the law of the Lord can fall into here. I think of, look, look at verse 4 as an example. It says that they have filled this place with innocent blood. Wow. When I think about that, I think about probably things like child sacrifice. This, this passage would talk about that. I think it would refer to them killing or, or persecuting those people who were still wanting to follow the Lord. And I think to myself, how does a society fall into this place? And then I think about... Well, look around. If we look around in our society today, what do we see? We see a nation that has been founded on Judeo-Christian principles. And yet what do we see? Romans 1 essentially lived out right before our very eyes where God has given people over to a depraved mind and to follow the desires of their, of their sinful nature. And I think to myself, 
what has happened in this situation? What has happened is that people have forgotten the word of the Lord. And we see it in our society today too. I think about passages like Deuteronomy chapter 28, where it is spelled out in clear terms that if we obey, God will bless. But if we disobey, he will curse. And then people wonder, where did this discipline come from? He has spelled it out for us, church. I'll never forget. A years ago, I heard a preacher say, Bible illiteracy is not a problem in the church. It is the problem in the church. Church, may we never forget the words of scripture, of holy scripture that God has given us, that we can plainly learn how to live our lives in such a way that please him and what obedience looks like so that we can be that we can avert disaster, that we can avert discipline in our lives because we know of what he has said. And that's why I want to encourage all of us that that's the importance of this, this reading plan that we're on, that we are learning what the Bible says, that we are learning how God wants us to live so that we would not fall into the state of the society that we read about in Jeremiah 19 and that we would not fall into the ways of the world that we see all around us today. And so a good question here to close would just simply be, Father, could you please help me to live in faith and obedience that I might live pleasing to you? Have a blessed day walking with him.